Hey guys, welcome back to the Fish Tank presented by Fish USA with myself, John Dietz, and my bestest buddy in the world, Jake Schneider over here. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down everything smallmouth bass fishing because it's getting to that time of the year. No matter where you live in the country right now, ice is officially off. So we have temps from the low 40s all the way to mid 60s, just depending on where you're at. And it's, it's starting to pop off. It's starting to be every angler's favorite time of year. So I'm going to be doing no more of the power fishing side of it. Well, Jake is going to be my finesse dude for this topic. So we've got a little bit of everything going on. So hang with us and let's get after it. Jake, take her away. All right. I'm just going to start with something I think most smallmouth fishermen have uh, uh, thrown before. That? That's a drop shot, John. No way. You might know something about that. Use it a time or two. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, for everybody that doesn't know what a drop shot is, uh, it's just a piece of leader uh, that separates your your weight, I mean, which is obviously on the bottom, up to a hook, and it keeps your bait suspended off the bottom. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera very well, but in the water, it's going to be sitting like that, but the bait is going to be more flared out. You can sit it right there, you can pound it, you can make it jiggle, dance, and it just drive those uh, smallmouth up a wall. Um, it's the only tactic in bass fishing where you can actually keep it on the spot and impart the action into the bait. Like you can keep it and move it vertically as much as you want without actually moving the bait horizontally. So that's a huge tool in itself uh, for I don't even know how many different applications, whatever you want it to expose. Yeah, it's, a, it's an absolute killer for, I mean, smallmouth no matter what uh, time they're in. Pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn. All the way to winter fishing, really. Yeah, I mean, any time of the year, you can throw a drop shot for smallmouth. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different baits that you can throw on it. This is actually a big baits uh, small ice smasher. It's one of my favorites. It has a ton of action. Um, like and then this is a, a staple on the Great Lakes. It, that's Gary the, Yamamoto shad shape worm. I'm familiar. Yeah, that's a shad shape worm. Can I see that real quick? Yep. Fun fact. You can rig it both ways, but a lot of the drop shot baits, what you see is they have a flat side and then a curved side. So what that flat side is for is it actually acts as like water displacement, so it holds that bait up horizontally a little bit more. So you can rig it however you want, but it actually cups the water when you rig it with that flat side down, so that way it helps it just suspend a little bit better. So a lot of times with worms and stuff too, um, you can hook them right through the nose a lot of times, uh, if they're in a, if they've seen that a lot, if you're fishing really pressured waters or something like that, I'll take it and I'll make it look very, very stupid. Wacky. I'll, I like it. I'll fish it wacky rigged. It just shows them something different, and sometimes that's the key. Um, they won't eat a nose hook, but as soon as you throw it in there and it's uh, wacky rig, they'll come over and slurp it. This place is a lot more water too. It'll get their attention from a lot further away. Yeah, I mean, everybody's throwing a, a wacky rig Senko and it knows how, how well those work. So Nobody would throw that on a drop shot though. Yeah. <laughs> also, I don't have one out here, uh, but one of my favorites is the, uh, it's like a three inch yum dinger. Uh, it's just a, a small Senko that works perfect. Nose hook, especially wacky rig too. Absolutely. Um, Here's a little secret that I'm going to give you. Uh -oh, Don't tell too bait. many people. Breaking out of bait. But. It's all right. We're working. Here's a 2.8 Kitek. Without putting it on jig head, nose hook it. It's on a drop shot. You can throw that out there, and you can still keep bottom contact with your, with your little baby drop shot hook, or drop shot wind, sorry. Uh, you can throw it out there, keep your rod tip high, you can feel the bottom. See, that's dragging across the bottom, but you're still swimming your Kitek like a foot off the bottom. It's a great way to cover water. It's one of my favorite ways on the Great Lakes. I'll put up anywhere from a half ounce to like, uh, you know, even up to an ounce drop shot weight if you want, depending on how deep of water you're in. And you can cover water so efficiently with that, just casting it out and just dragging it and reeling it real slow. So that way you don't have to cast a 2.8 Kitek out on an ounce jig head and try to drag it, you get that super awesome finesse presentation. That's awesome. Baby. Yeah, and when you throw this on the bottom, uh, I mean, you're going to feel it on the bottom, so you always know that is a foot off the bottom, no matter what. When you're throwing just a ball head jig head on like a Kitek, uh, you can kind of guesstimate where your bait's going to be in the water column. Um, I mean, you can throw it out lay it on the bottom and then just slow reel it and you're probably going to be within that foot 
But with this, no matter what, you know you're going to be a foot off the bottom. Can I see it real quick? So one thing that I do like to touch on, and Jake is right, you'll know it's a foot off the bottom, but you have to think about your cast angle too. So if you're right below you, obviously you're going to be a foot off the bottom. But if you cast it out, say, 60 feet, now your bait's going to be something like this because it's going to be at that different angle. So you have to take an account for that. So if you're going to be casting it more, I'll go to a longer leader. I'll go to like a two-foot leader, maybe even a three-foot leader, depending on where the fish are at, because that'll help compensate for that angle. Just one more thing I like to think about. So I'm just going to move right on the hooks. Um, I think we covered right. everything about... Oh, one more. TRD, wacky rig, kills them. Slams them. You can nose rig it too. Sometimes they like that no action. If they're really, really pressured fish, that lack of action can be the difference maker. So yeah, try something different. Just something really slow uh, and stupid out there can you know turn them right on. The turd. We'll get to the that turd. later. We'll, we're going to get to that. Um, yeah, I think that was a good cover of the drop shot though. Uh, one thing on the drop shot is just think about the weight you're throwing. Uh, I like to throw tungsten personally, but I know it's really expensive, but the feel is incredible for it. So if you're covering water on uh, big flats that you're looking for hard spots, I would recommend tungsten because you'll be able to feel those hard spots. Whereas if you're uh, just up shallow, just pitching around, I would go with lead because it's cheaper if you're around stuff that you're going to get caught on more. You know, if you have individual spots you can see, throw lead, but otherwise I like tungsten. Um, yeah, and the, the tungsten, I usually throw like, I throw the Wu tungsten. I mean, it's Who doesn't? yeah, it's it's good stuff. Uh, but we'll do a little cut on this. But you can there's a little clip in here, so it's not like a normal bell sinker, like your lead uh, water grumman bell sinker um, that you have to kind of you know tie it on. You can just take this, put it right through here, and then snap it right on, and that's not coming off. And what's really cool about this is like when you're throwing, uh, you know, two, three foot leaders with it, you can always unclip it, if it'll unclip, slide it up your line, and adjust your depth that easy without, you know, having to clip it off, retie. And especially in like tournament situations when you're, there's lack of time, that, that can be killer. One thing I do like to do is uh, I will take and tie an overhand knot. If I already know what depth I'm going to be fishing on tournament day, I'll take and tie an overhand knot on the back end of that, so that way even when fish are jumping, it doesn't just like slip off. Just a little tip. I think we covered drop shot pretty good right there, though. So, one more of the hooks. Talk about the hooks? Oh, right, yeah. got to do the hooks. So, I throw anything from like a, uh, like a, a two to like a one knot. One knot's really pushing it. Um, but like a, a size two, size one, uh, that's perfect. Um, uh, th this is a gamagatsu. That's just a, like your normal drop shot hook. It's like an octopus style hook, um, and it or a mosquito hook. Owner makes mosquito light wire hooks. Those are my favorite. Yeah, they're super good, super sharp. Uh, I really like Owner's uh, SSW cutting point hooks. Uh, I mean, I use them for steelhead uh, and a bunch of other species, worm harnesses for walleyes. Um, I mean, and they, they work great for smallmouth too. Um, I mean, you could use pretty much any hook you have, but I mean, like that, that style hook can uh, be, a, that's the way to do it. I mean, it hooks them right in the roof of the mouth every time. Just the thing to think about with the hooks is always, and this is always, no matter what hook you're using, just look at the gap. Can I spar that hook for a second? It's hard to see, but you have to look at where the point is relative to the eye of the hook. I like there to be a significant gap there. So even these, uh, what are these? G finesse hooks? No, they're, they're just your normal split shot. Oh, uh, split shot, shot drop shot hooks. I'll take pliers and bend that up a little bit so that way it really drives it home. But just something to think about. How about we slide over into a, a power fishing tactic? We'll kind of go back and forth. Yeah. On so another great finesse tactic that is also a power fishing technique is a jerk bait. And these things come in all different sizes. You can see I have. Ooh, I'm dropping them. I have a plus one, a plus two, and an original 110. The plus two is actually on the floor, but we'll forget about that. So you can cover an immense amount of water in all kinds of different depth ranges with it. And I say it's a finesse tactic because depending on how you use it, you can turn those negative fish into positive fish really, really fast. Um, no, no matter where you're at, no matter how deep you are. 
Uh, obviously, if you get down into that 15 and below range, you're kind of pushing it. But if you weight your hooks and whatnot, you can still make it happen. Now, one thing we didn't touch on with drop shot, but we'll get back to it when we talk about the other finesse tactics, is the rod that I like to throw this on. So right here I have a St. Croix Victory Rod. It's their new model, which is actually our product of the week, isn't it? Product of the week. Product of the week. St. Croix Victory Rod. They just came out with it. Give it a try. It feels pretty wicked. I haven't thrown it yet, but I'm going to. I have that a 7-1 medium heavy, and I know 7-1 is pretty long for a lot of guys that like to fish jerk baits. I'm short myself, so I typically go with somewhere around a 6-10. But if I'm fishing big expanses of water, which oftentimes when we're fishing smallmouth we do, I like to have a little bit longer rod because it gives me longer reach and longer casts. And it also allows that bait to get down deeper. Uh, so that's just one thing to think about. And then line size comes into play, where if I'm fishing deep, I'm going to go 10 pound test. Whereas if I'm fishing up shallow, I'm going to go into that 15 pound line. Uh, with fluorocarbon, Visibility is not really an issue for me as far as them seeing the line, especially when they're coming after something like this. So I'm going to get right into how we're going to work the bait. Obviously, Vision 110 is my favorite jerk bait by far. It's most people's favorite jerk bait across the country, even though they are ridiculously expensive. But you know, you can't argue with results. So mega bass all the way. Oh yeah, you got the hat on. Where yep. did you go? So I like the plus one because it's a very versatile bait. Uh, like with a simple line change, I'll keep two rods on my deck, one with 15 and one with 10. I can switch up from throwing in four to seven feet of water to seven to 10 feet of water really, really easily. But the way to work this bait, as Kevin Van Dam has put it, is you always work that bait with slack in your line. And what I mean by that is when you retrieve that bait, you're gonna snap it, but there's gonna be a bow in your line to that bait. So I never wanna move the bait with the reel. It's only with the rod. So a lot of people try to reel it, snap it, and what that's going to do is that's going to, the bait's still going to work, but where you get the maximum action out of that bait is when you use the rod. And you'll snap it, and then I want to point that rod straight back at that bait, because what that does is that gives it line to allow it to cut further out of line. And that's how you get those reaction strikes. So when you go and you, I mean, you hit it right on the head, snap it, point your rod tip right at the bait again. There'll be slack in your line, and you watch that line. Watch it. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. You'll, that you'll, little bow. Yep. You won't really feel it in your rod a lot of times, but it's just like a Senko bite. You'll watch that line, and after you snap it and you give that thing slack, your line will go dunk. And that's you lean on them right away. Yeah, lean and on them right away. It's going to depend on how fast you're working the bait, and that's what I'm going to get into next. So in these colder water periods, even with smallmouth, I've found that when, once that water hits like 43 degrees, I can almost work that bait without any real pauses into it. Um, you know, obviously if there's clear water, sometimes you can give it a longer pause to try to draw fish in from further. But I'm working that bait, I'm going to hit it, point it back, hit it, hit it, point it back, hit it, point it back. And I'm just going to vary that a little bit, but I'm not going to put a lot of pauses in there. Because, Don't let them see it. Well, that and smallmouth are cold water species for the most part, you know, they dominate the northern regions. And I, I can probably count on not maybe not on one hand, but the times that I've seen my line jump, oftentimes just because I'm working that bait so fast, I'm not really looking for it. You know, I, I see the bite in the winter time a lot when that water temp is down below 40, but once it gets to that 43, like I said, I'm just continually retrieving that, and I go to snap it, and that weight's there, and I just lean on it right away. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually the exact opposite. I love working my my bait slow. Oh, okay. Um, so like. I, I run very natural colors most of the time. Um, not your bright, annoying stuff like clown. That's a great color. Uh, late season, like uh, post spawn smallmouth when they're super aggressive, you know. Uh, spawn smallmouth. Um, really bright, annoying stuff works great. But I love natural colors. And I love working my jerk bait slow. I mean, throw that thing out there, get it down to your depth. I mean, for the, if I'm working like a deeper crank or deeper jerk bait or a jerk bait that's going to run deeper I actually will reel it down like Absolutely. I mean just take a couple cranks I won't start jerking at the same at first um, but I'll I'll jerk it throw it right or point my rod tip right back at that bait and let it sit you know I mean I'll let it sit like five seconds sometimes and I really believe that those smallmouth they come up I've seen it they they come up and they look at your bait and they they just examine it examine it and then as soon as you give that thing another rip, they'll come and just smash it. I think that's that's just the difference in anglers right there, you know? And 
just play with your retrieves a little bit when you're out there in the water. You know, if you're working a cast back and you're like, man, I'm right on a point or right at the base of a flat where I think those fish should be pushing up, don't be afraid to, you know, give it some fast twitches, but then pause it for three to five seconds, even five to ten seconds, you know, and just give it some time, you know, you're going to figure out what those fish are doing. But that is, those are two of the most predominant smallmouth techniques across the country, Tom. That is yeah. probably the most predominant covering water technique across the country as far as smallmouth are concerned. You want to talk about color real quick? Yeah, I'll break down color a little bit. Honestly, with color, I'm not a huge guy when it comes to, yeah, this is the color and they're going to eat it no matter where you go. I pick some natural shads, I pick some bluegill colors, and then maybe a couple shark or like shad colors that stick out a little bit. So, like your natural perch colors, I don't even know what this color is called because I don't throw it. This is GG Perch OB. It's just a perch color. I like a natural shad color. This is Elegy Bone. It's got a little chartreuse on the bottom, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, it's translucent, but it also puts that little bit of flash out there. And then just a natural shad color. You know, those three will cover you all across the country, you know. And they have different variations of their colors. Uh, they have thousands of their colors out there. So just pick whichever one you like because, honestly, the triggering effect is going to outdo the color pattern no matter where you go. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, action over color any day. Oh, for sure. Color can work. I mean, is a factor, but action over color is my, my biggest thing. Uh, we're from Erie, PA. We fish uh, Presque Isle Bay. Uh, we fish, you know. World renowned smallmouth fishery. I mean, yeah. World renowned, some of the best in the world. Uh, and we typically have some pretty clear water. Um, I am a mega bass guy uh, to my grave, but I love Lucky Craft. Uh, that's just your Lucky Craft pointer. Uh, that's an awesome, awesome jerk bait, too. Uh, that's ghost it minnow. Is. Very no, no color. Yeah, translucent. Uh, very natural. It looks like your emeralds, uh, your uh, your gizzard shad, any of the bait fish. I mean, it could even look like a, a baby bluegill or something like that, too. I think that's enough about beating them to death on color. Let's transition more into some of your other finesse tactics. Uh, you want to talk about blade baits a little bit? Blade baits and maybe some of these dark sleepers? So, it's another uh, huge technique here. Yeah, a blade bait is, uh, I mean, it's a fairly new technique, I think. Uh, I would disagree with that. That blade's been around for a long time. Well, the Silver Buddy. The Silver Buddy yeah. has been around for a long time. I think so, it's just blown up recently. Yeah, it's blown up. So a lot of you know your old timer smallmouth guys uh, grew up throwing the Silver Buddy. Uh, that's just it's been around for forever. I think our grandparents uh, threw that bait. Um, but like, there's a Mega Bass Dino Response. Uh, they come in a bunch of great colors. Um, plus. What I like that Mega Bass did was they put a little bit of tinsel on the back. Uh, it just gives it a little bit extra flash, makes it kind of look like the fins. I don't know if it makes that big of a difference. One but. thing that I do like that they put that on there, and this is something people don't know, and I don't know if they meant to do this when they created it, but what that little bit of tinsel does, I think it's just crystal flash is all it is, is it actually keels that bait. So anybody that's thrown a blade bait, I don't care who you are or where you're from, if you've thrown a blade bait, you've had a foul on your line like one out of six casts, right? One way to combat that is with this little dude. It actually acts as like a little bit of a weed guard for that back hook to kind of keep it from coming up and catching the line. That's one thing that I've found that it does. I'll talk about another technique to do that, but. Yeah, I never, I never thought about let's that. Let's talk about the rod, because we didn't get into the drop shot rod, so we'll talk about the drop shot rod and the blade bait rod, because honestly they're pretty similar. So. Is that another St. Croix you got over there? Yep, there's another St. Croix. That's a Mojo Bass, this is a 7-1 medium. That's like your go go to all around. You can yeah. throw a drop shot blade bait. Uh, you can even throw a jerk bait. On. Yeah, you really could. And yeah. If you're from Japan, you're laughing at us that we throw them on casting rods, but <laughs> just the yeah. difference. Uh, a lot of guys, it's a misconception that you got to throw a jerk bait on a casting rod. I mean, that's Chris Alde. He throws a yeah. spinning rod a lot of times, most yeah. of the time, I think. And he's like, other than KVD, he's like King Daddy jerk bait. You know? I don't know if he's King Daddy, but he's up there. He definitely throws a lot of jerk baits. Yeah. I mean. Vision 110 on, on one of his Mega Bass jerk, rod, jerk bait rods, I mean, on a spinner rod, and he smashes fish on it. Um, anyway. That, yeah, anyway. We can talk about that forever. Uh, that's 7-1 medium. That's your go-to all around. Bread and butter. And then this is where you start to get into a little bit uh, more technique specific. Uh, this is 7-3 medium. This is a Shimano Intenza. Uh, or it's medium heavy. A little bit stiffer rod. A little bit stiffer. So this would be like your drop shot rod. So when you're, uh, your, uh, your drop shot rod, is that a little bit stiffer rod? 
Here, let me okay, let me ahead. explain. Yeah, I like so it. when you're when you're out and you're fishing a little bit deeper, um, and you have too light of a rod, and you're fishing, you know, your half ounce, one ounce drop shot weights, um, you're gonna have like, I mean, that's gonna load up the or the rod, yeah, the rod a lot. Um, when you fish a little bit stiffer rod, uh, and you you're fishing the, like a one ounce drop shot weight, I mean, that's heavy. Um, it won't bend that rod as much, uh, and then you'll be able to feel it a lot better. You'll be able to feel the the bottom a lot better, and I mean you'll have a more tight presentation from your bottom, or from the bottom, from your weight, all the way up to your rod tip. Um, and then, let's do that. Another one, mega bass. We throw a lot of mega bass here. Yeah, that's the dark sleeper. This um, is a revolutionary bait for those of you guys who fish around a nightmare that has changed smallmouth fisheries for the better. I'm a fishery science major, so, you know, forgive me here, Paula, but the gobies have done some amazing things. Don't ever take them out of where they are and put them anywhere else, obviously. But they fatten smallmouth up across the country. They're a nightmare as far as fisheries are concerned, but for smallmouth, they're a delicacy. And this little bait replicates that more than any other bait out there. You know what? I'll open this one up just because I'll pay for it later. So what does it have? The a jig hook. Hook. It has a jig hook. But what does it do? Is It has a little fin that guards that jig hook. So once you split that open, Bam, you got a jig hook right there. And this bait has a weight right in its nose, so you can glide that sucker right across the bottom. You can reel it over top of grass. It is a phenomenal way to cover water and also to just, you know, replicate a goby. And that's what I like for that medium heavy. I know you like to drop shot about it, yeah. but uh, I like throwing oh, for sure. swim baits on it. Single hook. Single hook. Yeah. Big single hook fan. Huge yeah. single hook fan. Me too. Uh, Any chance I get. With, a, with like, a, you know, your blade baits, um, a jerk bait. They all have treble hooks. Um, and treble hooks are renowned for. I mean, they stick fish great, but keeping fish on it can sometimes be a problem, especially if you have a, a stiff rod. Um, having a real soft rod uh, will protect those treble hooks a lot better. Uh, having that stiff rod, like with a, you know, with my drop shot hook. Uh, there she is. There she is. Single hook. I mean, you can really give it to them. Uh, and you, you can get away with a stiff rod. The same thing with the this little dark sleeper too. It has a pretty gaff hook on it. Uh, you it's can not really bad, lay into like, them. Mega bass jerk bait hooks aren't my favorite thing, but these hooks are one of my favorite things. Yeah, for sure. Great they don't hook. lose a lot of fish on it. When they eat it, you pin that hook in the roof of their mouth and you bring them to the boat. But where I would throw that bait, I would throw that bait anywhere there's grass. I'm gonna steal it again. Anywhere that you would like to throw a finesse jig or a Ned rig, but there's too much grass, that's where this puppy comes into play because it's got that little bit of weed protection that's all you really need and just the position of that hook. So it allows you to fish shallower in some of those places that you really can't get away traditionally with other baits. But let's keep moving. Let's talk about a Ned rig. We haven't talked about a Ned rig yet. Yeah. A Ned rig and a tube. Let's break down a Ned rig and a tube. So, Ned rig, uh, I think really before. Uh, Z-Man came out with their uh, with their TRD. Uh, everybody was kind of just throwing uh, their tubes. yeah <laughs> their tubes or uh, I know a lot of guys were throwing net rigs, but they were just using half of like a Senka. Yeah, you know, that's uh, just true. a normal jig head. Um, but what's really cool about these TRDs is that they actually float. Let me um, see. I'm gonna break them out. You keep talking about. It. Keep talking. So they actually float. So you can put them on a, a jig head. A Laztec baby. Yep. And that elastic floats. So you can put them on a jig head and you can throw it out there. And they ride just like that. Yep. And they'll, that tail will actually stick up. It won't lay flat against the bottom. It'll float and it'll stick right up. You twitch it and it'll, you know, twitch and it'll sit right back up. And smallmouth just love that. Product disclaimer. If you've never played around with Elastec before, and I don't care what company makes it, if it's Elastec, do yourself a huge favor. Do not put it in with other baits. Leave it in their individual packages because it will melt your plastics and your boxes. So, with that being said, keep it in the pla in the in the packaging. But continue on. So, um, moving on right from there. Oh, color. That's the deal. Uh, that's it is my the favorite deal. color. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite it's too. It's the deal. Uh, great color. Great color. Let's talk um, about some of the jig heads we throw off. So. Oh, what is that? Tell yeah. me about 
Yes, yeah, so though these are the, the Z-Man hogs, made out of the exact same thing. Uh, it's a it's a net bait also, but it, they have two little appendages on the back. A little more action. Yeah, when you twitch them. So this is just, you know, a piece of plastic. It's it's a it's really dead awesome. action. These guys, they it kind of looks like a crawdad. Um, they have the, the two little tails, you, you twitch along the bottom, and those two little tails, like, you know, You dance. work it just the same. Yeah. What we're gonna be throwing them on is, Every company now has shroom heads, so we just have the Z-Man one up here as a, you know, an example of all of them. But the Z-Man shroom heads are you know, the gold standard as far as hooks go. They bend out pretty easily, so keep that in mind, but that can be a good thing for you. And it just depends on where you're throwing it, the weight that I'll throw it on. Like this is all the way up to a quarter. This is a sixth ounce, so hook fishing anywhere from 12 to deeper, I'll throw this sixth, maybe a quarter. Um, that way you're getting down good and you can still maintain that bottom contact. But once I start getting up a little bit shallower, I'll go to that 32nd of an ounce. You know, I'll get to that little bit lighter weight that allows it to glide a little bit. But if I'm bed fishing, I'll fish with a little bit lighter because that way it can glide a little bit more and look more natural. But let's talk, let's talk swim baits because it looks like, oh wait, we forgot tubes. Probably another one of the oldest smallmouth techniques out there that is actually overlooked today. I don't think near as many people throw tubes as they should. Are we going to break those open too? No, we're not no, going to break those open. We've got too much of them. But these are just some Strike King coffee tubes. So these are the three and a half and the threes. These are two seven five fat coffee tubes. Uh, probably my favorite tube, honestly. But the way to work this, you can do it a couple different ways, is I'm going to throw it on that same medium heavy rod. And for all these tactics that we've covered so far, as far as spinning rods, I'm going to throw braid to a leader. I think that's big and we forgot to touch on yeah. that. That's our bad. But I like to throw 10 to 12 pound braid high vis so I can see everything that's going on and I'll put maybe a 12 to 15 foot 7 to 10 pound leader on there and you can use whatever con or a knot connection you like I like an FG knot it's a pain in the butt but uh, it works better than any other one I'm an old time back back uni knot either way you know pick your poison on that but as far as fishing a tube you know the weight obviously if you're Mark Zona you like throwing that half is your lightest you're going to go, all the way up to a three-quarter, maybe even an ounce if you're fishing, you know, deeper Great Lakes fish, or even shallow ones if you really want to crack it. Uh, but you can go all the way down to a sixteenth or an eighth and just drag it along the bottom. You know, if those fish are in a real negative mood, sometimes the best thing to do is just drag that tube. On the flip side of that, you can also crack it. And by crack it, I mean you're going to hit it like a jig, where you're hopping it and getting that bait to cut and swirl around. And that's what also triggers those fish, even when it's flat calm. One of my favorite stories is Mark Zona talking about it. Fishing a rock pile on Erie, throwing the same tubes that he's thrown, you know, for the last four days at those fish, and they're not eating it, not eating it, not eating it. And he gets stuck in the rock, and he cracks it to get it out of the rock, and boom, four pounder, you know. So play with the action just like everything here. Everything we talk about with fishing is all user action you're putting into it and it just depends on what the fish's mood is so just like keep varying your, retrieve, your retrieves and how you work that bait for every single one of these never forget that one keep that one in mind but that's a little bit about tubes for you set that off you got swim bait here let's talk swim baits so there's a kitek 2.8 that kitek is probably it's no not probably the best swim bait ever made whoa it's, whoa, it's up there yeah um, this is where we are not mega bass people. <laughs> yeah, these Kitek swim baits are incredible. Uh, they're super soft. They don't last a long time. I mean, a couple fish, uh, and you got to replace them. But you gotta have that soft plastic. Though. Yeah, you gotta have the soft plastic. You can see how much I can bend this thing. I mean, with the slightest amount of reeling, that tail kicks. And a lot of times in that really cold water, um, or when those fish are very negative, or they're keying in on strictly bait fish, I'll keep that rod tip, I'll cast it out there, keep that rod tip real high and just reel it very slow, just enough to get that tail kicking. Um, and they, they'll just come up and smoke it. And all you'll feel is either it'll load up or it'll go and there he is. One and, thing to keep in mind real quick, because I know we're talking about some very product specific baits here, but those are just favorites of ours. Every company makes their own, uh, you know, Big Bite Baits makes great swim baits, Mega Bass makes phenomenal swim baits. So whatever swim baits you guys like, you know, don't shy away from that. You don't have to buy these exact baits just because we tell you to. This is just the baits that we've played with, you know, in the industry and caught fish doing it. It's a confidence booster for us. So, you know, find your confidence bait is what I'm telling you. Because fisherman makes the bait. You know, it's not the bait that makes the fisherman. Some guys might find, you know, like when a chatterbait, when Brian Thrift uh, started making a chatterbait famous, it wasn't 
the fact that the chatterbait was catching the fish. It was Brian Thrift knew where to fish the chatterbait and how to fish it. So that's what it comes down to with every single bait on the market. Everybody can make any bait famous. If you were to put a Mega Bass Vision 110 in Kevin Van's, Dam, or Kevin Van Dan's hands versus any other jerk bait, he would still absolutely smash them. You know? yeah. So just find your confidence baits and find what works for you is really what I'm talking about. Yeah, that, that's a perfect example. Like, I mean, we're talking about Kevin Van Dam, but he's one of the greatest fishermen ever. But he is he's the greatest fisherman. Yeah, yeah, for I wanna, sure. I want to get that on record. The greatest. <laughs> we love you, KVD. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but he's not out there throwing Vision 110s. He's throwing his striking bait, and he knows how to work that thing. Um, I mean, they're on the cheaper side, but it's how he imparts the action of that. Um, a, a Vision 110, it's a little bit easier to do it, but... I mean, if you know how to fish a, you know, a jackal re-range, uh, a, a, a pointer, a striking jerk bait, um, I mean, that's a, yeah. his perfect example. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's keep talking about swim baits a little bit. So, I know he talked about the finesse side of it a little bit, fishing it on a drop shot, fishing it on a ball head. What I want to talk about a little bit is once those fish kind of get up a little bit shallower or you're fishing in that, I don't know, that anywhere from like seven feet or less, if there's like some grass, these big swim baits, you know, this is only a 3.8. I didn't have a 4.8 or a 4.3 on me. But those bigger sizes paired with, you know, a, an owner. This is a VMC HD bladed swim bait, but I like the owner flashy swimmer. You know, it's a weedless swim bait head. Those weedless swim bait heads can be effective, amazing tools at covering water. You know, it's, there's nothing more natural than a swim bait. If you look at baits in the water, a swim bait looks like a bait fish more than pretty much any other bait that we have ever used. You know? So... Picking some good colors, you know, this is all, I like electric shad, uh, you know, that chartreuse in blue works really, really well, but any natural shads, like I said, I'm really not too color specific, and you just rig those up with the screw locks on those, and you honestly, there's not a lot of baits out there that you can cast out, reel, and catch fish, a swim bait is one of those baits, because they can track it for so long, and you can impart so much action in it with just the weight that you throw it on. You know, if you put a little bit heavier weight, I know that's a 316 ounce, that would work awesome anywhere up to like seven feet if you slow roll it. But you can speed it up and get these things burning across the surface. You can slow roll them where that tail's just kicking. And you can catch fish all year round on it. So that can cover water in 30 feet. It can cover water in two feet. It's just, for you guys that are fishing after work and, you know, don't have a lot of time, that's a great technique. You know, jerk baits, swim baits, and then keeping a drop shot and net rig up on deck. That is your combo. When those fish, you know, you catch one or two on a swim bait, you know, and they kind of shut off, that's when I would pick up that drop shot, you know, that jig, that, you know, dark sleep or something like that. But as far as rods go for swim baits, this is a 13 fishing omen. I like to throw it, not hit the light. I like to throw it, uh, you know, depending on the size of swim bait, those smaller ones, I like that medium heavy rod, obviously, that 7-3 spinning rod. But if I'm throwing, you know, an exposed head and those big weedless hooks, I like to throw them on around a 7.5, medium heavy, you know, maybe even a heavy if I get to those bigger swim baits. That's a great option. You just have to pair it with the rod to the size of the bait you're throwing. If I get, you know, a half ounce or greater, I'm probably going to go to a heavy. But if I'm throwing it a half ounce or lighter, I'm going to throw that medium heavy, you know. And honestly, the bite is just going to be a tick or you'll just feel them load up. But most often, it's just a tick and then you give them a second, and I just keep reeling until I feel that they're on there, and then I hammer them, especially with these big single hooks like we talked about earlier. Single hooks are my favorite thing ever. It's right in the roof of the mouth, and then you just crank and crank and crank. What pound line are you running those with? Your, uh, your underspin. My underspin. So the, the weedless one depends on where I'm fishing it and if there's pike around or not. I've played around with a lot of pike. If there's pike around and I'm fishing it, and 10 feet or less, and I'm fishing those big, those big ones, I'll throw 20 pound line. I'll throw 15 to 20 pound line. But if I'm throwing an exposed head where I'm fishing anywhere from like seven feet or deeper, you know, even if I'm throwing an exposed head but it's not around any cover, uh, then I'm gonna throw it on like 10 to 15 pound, you know. The heavier head I get, the lighter, the heavier line I'm gonna go, obviously, just to kind of compensate for that a little bit. Yeah, and when I'm, when I'm throwing it on like a spinning rod, real light stuff, like that's a, you know, a quarter ounce head with a 2.8 Kitec. I'll throw seven pound FC Sniper, great stuff. Yeah, and I still like to pair that with that light one. I still like to throw Braid to a leader. Yep. Whereas with these bigger ones, there's some guys that like to throw Braid to a leader. I, I'm a big fluorocarbon only with those. I just, I like the feel of it. 
as far as you know when you get bit with it you know I feel like with braid I'm a little bit too in contact with it I feel like when they hit it you know with that braid you feel every single thing so I feel like I set the hook way too soon that's just me if you have a, the restraint to be able to like let them eat it for a second more power to you and God bless you but with that fluorocarbon I feel like it cushions my reaction time a little bit more because there is a little bit of stretch there. I agree. So, um, let's talk about, uh, as far as we're going to branch off from swim baits now, and I want to talk a little bit about dirty water and uh, windy weather because, you know, I, everybody loves catching smallmouth and it's really pretty easy in the spring to catch them when it's flat calm and sunny out. Those Great Lakes fish go nuts. But what do you do when it's a little bit windy? Uh, you know, it's overcast and the conditions are a little bit adverse. That's when I'm going to break out these two guys. This is a Straight King spinnerbait, and this is a Z-Man Jackhammer chatterbait. Those two baits in those windier conditions can be absolutely lights out. People, honestly, nobody thinks that a chatterbait is a smallmouth bait. There's a lot of guys that do not throw it, but uh, there's a lot of fisheries where that is one of my go-to smallmouth baits. Um, if you're around a lot of grass, especially if there's wind. And, all of these baits work in different conditions. Uh, a swim bait is obviously going to work a little bit better when it's over, um, overcast a little bit, but when there's a little bit of chop on the water, a little bit of wind. Same thing with a jerk bait. You know, you get a little bit of wind on the water, they get a little not as good of a look at it, they're going to eat it a lot more. Uh -huh. If it's flat calm, that's point where you have to break out those, those tubes, those net rigs, those drop shots a little bit more, the dark sleeper. But you just have to keep in mind the weather conditions that you're dealing with and that's why we like to have options you know if you have options that's all more power to you that's just more tools in your boxes you're gonna get the job done better so once that wind picks up a little bit I'm gonna break out this spinner bait that is a phenomenal smallmouth bait I feel like I've said that 75 times yeah. tonight but it when that wind picks up a little bit that acts as my swim bait you know you get if the wind's really blowing I'm gonna up the size of the blades you can see I got some big spin some big blades on there it's not really a heavy bait it's like a 3 8 ounce spinner bait but you can cover a lot of water with it especially when those fish are pushed up on those windy banks and it just imitates bait fish like no other when there's a little bit of chop on that water you can burn that thing and one thing I like to do and this goes with the swim bait too is I'll go three cranks normal and then I'll speed one up and that way it just gives that bait a little bit of a shutter and it looks like it's getting away and those fish will t-bone it one thing I do want to touch on is with smallmouth, I will like I do like to put a trailer hook on it. I don't have one currently here. Mustad makes a great trailer hook. Owner makes a great trailer hook. Gamagats makes a great trailer hook. But those fish come up and they side swipe that bait. If they nip at it, they're going to get that trailer hook. So keep that in mind. And those baits, I'm going to throw on 15-pound line. I'm not going to go below 15-pound line with spinner bait. I just will not. It's just personal preference. Same thing goes with the chatter bait. I'm going to go 15-pound fluorocarbon, maybe even 20 if I'm fishing really, really shallow. Um, and that chatterbait, I'm going to save if there's more grass. I feel like when those conditions get really, really windy and really nasty, I feel like that chatterbait puts out a lot more vibration. Personally, I know Rick Clun would probably hang me in my sleep right now uh, because he loves the spinnerbait. But those two are just great when that weather turns a little bit. And I'm going to throw that on that same 7-1 medium heavy rod. Uh, this is like this is that uh, victory rod like I pointed out earlier. And if you notice, I'm talking about a 7-1 a lot because it's just a versatile rod that you can do a lot of different things with. You can throw a tube on it if you throw fluorocarbon. You can throw that spinnerbait, that swimbait, that jerkbait, you know, that chatterbait. All of those will come into play with that rod. So uh, I'll talk about the reel that I like to throw that on real quick. I like to throw that on a 7-4 gear ratio reel. This is a Shimano, what is it, Corrado, Corrado K. Corrado K is a big, you know, big favorite of mine, but obviously, like I said, with everything, different brands, different products, they all work really, really well. But uh, that 7.4 is a really good middle of the road retrieve. You can pick up a lot of line really fast, but you're also not going to be overworking the bait just by, you know, turning the reel at a normal pace. And then uh, reels for, you know, when, I'm, when I'm throwing uh, these, these real small baits uh, with braid to a fluorocarbon leader. Spinning I'm, rods. Yeah, spinning rods. Spinning reels, sorry. Uh, yeah, when I'm throwing like a spinning reel, uh, I'm running anything from like a like a 2500 size all the way to like a 3000. I mean, I'm very a big fan very, of the 3000. Yeah, me too. Uh, Personally, a lot of longer those casts. Yeah, longer casts. Um, the the spool's a little bit bigger, um, and with a 3000, they have like a, a T handle on them. I'm I'm a big fan of T. You handle. like the clam handle? Yeah. I'm like a straight handle man. I'm the bit. I'm like 
when I grab that handle, it's right there. It's right there every time. You know what I mean? You gotta figure out what you like. That's what it's all about. Uh, great reels. Uh, the Shimano Stratic. Uh, we both fish those. Do you uh, want a cheaper option? Because I know the Stratics, you gotta have some deep pockets. Shimano Nasty and Sedona are awesome reels. They have like 10 of each. They work phenomenal. For sure. Uh, but this Stratic does have way smoother drag. It's just yeah. a higher quality reel that's gonna last you a lot longer. But if you're not on the water more than a few times a year, Nasty's a great option. You know, it's $99. Yep. And it works awesome. And then just a, a little bit of upgrade from there. They just came out with a brand new Shimano I'm Altegra. I'm about the new Altegra. The Altegra, I got to feel it before they just got sold out. How's it feel? Incredible. Like a Stratic. I'd have to get one. For $50 less. What? Yep. So. Uh, Mike girl. Yeah. The brand new Shimano Altegra 2500. Awesome reel. Awesome. I think that about covers us as far as what we were talking about. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. We're hoping we can help at least one person. That's what we were talking about off camera. But uh, you if know, you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Um, I mean, hit either of us up on social media, Instagram, Facebook. At John Deeds Fishing Product Placement. TikTok? TikTok. Are you a TikToker? I am a TikToker. Man. Do a lot of talking <laughs> on the side. Um, yeah, Jake Schneider, Instagram. Hit us up on uh, on Instagram, any of those, um, and we'll answer your questions. So, thank you guys. Um, I can't wait to start interacting with you guys. Uh, hopefully, this blows up big time. Like, share, and uh, follow show the Fish USA page. We're gonna be doing these every couple weeks here. And uh, follow both of us on it on Instagram too uh, and Facebook. I mean, we're constantly pumping out big fish pictures. I just, caught like a, big fish pictures. I just caught a six pounder. Six oh five. That's a big 605. fish. Six oh five. Big fish. Yep. So. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have today. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, we hope to see you on the water. Peace. Thank you.